To complete the life cycle of the caddis, let's look at the adult stage. Once the adult caddis escapes the pupil shuck, it flies quickly to streamside vegetation. Caddis are easily recognized by their tent-shaped wings. They have long antennae and no tails. Shaking branches will quickly tell you if caddis adults are present. You can recognize them by their quick and erratic flight. Caddis flies mate on the foliage, after which the females fly back to the water to lay their eggs, usually in the evenings. They dip their abdomen to the water surface, or they swim underwater to lay their eggs directly on the bottom. Adults swimming underwater are encased in a bubble of air that gives them a shiny, silvery appearance. The LaFontaine diving caddis is designed especially to imitate the caddis adult, air bubble and all, as it dives underwater. Fish it up and across and let it swing to the surface to imitate the adult caddis returning from the bottom after laying its eggs. This elk hair caddis will match the adult stage of the caddis on the surface. The elk hair caddis works well in riffles because it floats well and is highly visible while still providing a good silhouette of the natural caddis. Some of the best caddis fishing with dry flies occurs when adults are laying eggs. With two or three color and size variations of the elk hair, you can fish nearly any caddis hatch anywhere. This looks like an excellent riffle for fishing the dry elk hair caddis. It's about knee deep, and it's got lots of rocks and boulders breaking up the current. I like to work upstream, casting up or up and across, so your fly will drift back naturally without drag over the fish. Keep your casts within 35, 40 feet, so you have good line control. If you see fish rising, cast about two feet in front of them, so your fly will drift over them. Otherwise, fish the good holding water, the slicks and flat water behind the rocks, and those current tongues or eddies between the rocks. That's where the fish are likely to be holding. I like to make five or 10 casts to a specific area and then move on. This way I can cover lots of water, get my fly over quite a few fish in this riffle. One thing you want to make sure is that your fly doesn't drag in the current. You can prevent drag by stripping in the slack line as the fly drifts towards you like this, or you may need to make an upstream mend like that as the fly drifts down. You'll just have to decide which technique will work best for the water you're fishing. But you want to make sure your fly is floating naturally. There's a rise. He's got it. Sitting right in that slack water behind that boulder. Boy, in these riffles, that's one of the best places to find a fish. They'll sit back there and sip in that bugs that come down and cast right up in the top. Get your fly to come down with a nice drag-free float, and you can really... two other techniques that are really effective when you're fishing the dry elk hair caddis. The first, just let your dry fly drift down below you and pop it under the water so it'll drift like a wet fly just under the surface. This imitates a natural adult that would be swimming underwater to lay its eggs. The other technique is to flutter your caddis or skate it over the surface. A lot of caddis are real active and they just kind of hop and skate over the water. So you just want to skate that fly right over those feeding lanes behind the rocks, just like that. Just pull it through, get it to skate. Always set up a pattern and cover all the water in a riffle, but pay special attention to prime feeding lines as you come to them. 
If you wade right out to prime feeding lies first, you will spook trout holding in other parts of the riffle, and they will charge over and spook the fish in the prime feeding line. The life cycle of the caddis, larva, pupa, and adult, shows you why you have to be prepared to fish at all levels of the riffle, bottom, mid-depth, and on top, because fish feed at all those levels.